Hi, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. At Starfish, we've always really prided ourselves on getting the product right. How do we help our customers get really valuable? And that's, it's a very subtle exercise. And one of the main areas for our clients is in biotech. Because it's a really interesting mix of the assays and of the equipment that you need to read the assays, to maybe prepare the samples, and a lot of different technology approaches which are ideally suited for. Maybe it's optics, maybe it's uh, radiation, maybe it's electrical sensors, uh, fluorescence, all different kinds of things. Uh, we can cover that whole thing, taking your assay, making it work really well, and taking the technology and adapting it to be cost effective and make, your, uh, make the company's value proposition really work. So in the next few minutes, you'll see a variety of our personnel in that area give some useful tips. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Thank you. So my name is Nick Allen. I'm the biotech manager here at Starfish Medical. I'm a microbiologist by training. Prior to coming to Starfish, I ran my own CRO for a number of years, and we did a lot of antimicrobial medical device testing. Uh, right now, I uh, lead up the biotech group we specialize in uh, handling what I call the wet samples, things that um, we're going to test our products in, uh, like biological fluids, urine, blood, that sort of thing. And we also do assay development. So in uh, point of care assay design, the most important thing to think about is to dig deep before you design. And what I mean by that is thinking about what, the, what you're actually testing. So a classic example is uh, we had a client come to us a few years ago looking to come up with a system to ship blood all over the country. And we dug deeper, we found out that the reason why they wanted us to do that is they thought their assay was too complicated to, to make into a point of care product. And I, after digging deeper and looking at the analytes they're looking at, we found out we could do it fairly easily on what's called a lateral flow test, and that's basically a, a pregnancy test. You can manufacture those things for pennies a test and ship them all over the country for uh, two, two plus years shelf life, and that totally solved the client's problem. So another example is if you're designing uh, an assay that looks for an analyte that's blood-based, you really want to make sure that whatever detection system you're designing for uh, isn't interfered with by blood, i.e. if your test is in the presence of blood and it gives you a false negative or a false positive, it's probably a bad thing and you want to dig deep and design around that. My name is Mark Derlich. I'm the Mechanical Engineering Manager at Starfish Medical. I've been with the company for seven years now. Uh, I have worked my way through a mechanical engineer up to principal mechanical engineer and have been running the group now for about a year and a half. Um, I often get involved in early stage projects but also have gone through the complete sequence through to uh, FDA master filings, uh, IRB approvals uh, and final clearances from the FDA. So one of the tips that I would convey is that sometimes the solutions to your workflow challenges are associated with a mechanical or physical embodiment. Uh, one example that I can use of that is uh, for a breath analysis, uh, analysis device. We were trying to determine a way to keep moisture in the system. And so we came up with desiccants, we came up with different solutions that scrubbed the moisture out. Uh, one of the better solutions was to just simply heat up the incoming air that's coming from breath, which is quite high in relative uh, humidity, and, and it solved a lot of problems. So instead of coming up with a solution uh, to a workflow challenge, we actually came up with a technical solution that solved that same problem. Another solution that came from development with Starfish was when we had a packed bed system. Uh, it was a novel sequestration process. Uh, where a ligand came into a packed bed and, and attached itself to uh, an element. And what we did was we looked at what the surface area requirements were for the device, we looked at how the assay was performing and determined that there was a much more effective way to take that same packed bed configuration and put it on a, on a flat sheet. Um, not only did it uh, reduce the bill of materials costs, it made the device smaller and we were, had to be, we were able to actually do direct quantification on this flat surface. Hi, I'm Ashley and I'm an embedded software engineer at Starfish Medical. I have an interdisciplinary background in biochemistry, computer science and electrical engineering and I'm fascinated by the interface between human physiology and devices. When designing algorithms for embedded assay devices, it's helpful to think like an assay technician. 
For example, a technician might be able to look at the data set and say, hey, this is positive or negative, but they'll also be able to use their intuition and experience to look at a set that might not quite be right and say, something's wrong here or maybe we need to investigate further. So part of my job is being able to use that experience from the technician and then design an algorithm to do the same thing. To allow a computer to be able to look at the same data set and say, yep, that's positive or that's negative or, hey, wait, something's wrong here. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Philipson. Uh, I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering and I, my role is often in the early stages of product development, working with the team to get a handle on open-ended problems and finding solutions to difficult multifaceted problems. I uh, particularly enjoyed working on microfluidics, uh, miniaturized optics, and custom electromechanics. And I'm particularly proud of the intellectual property that our team has created for our clients during the early development process. Something to keep in mind when you're working with microfluidics is to control your process. Seemingly small changes in fluid, material or geometry can end up compromising your fluid circuit. As an example, while we were developing a microfluidic cartridge and assay for one of our clients, we had the fluid circuit working perfectly, but we needed to change one of the reagents to improve the assay results. That small change ended up disrupting the fluid circuit and required a cartridge spin to get the fluid circuit running again. So it's important to control all the aspects of your fluid circuit that you can and to have time and budget for iteration if you anticipate any changes. Hi, my name is Peter Kazakoff. I'm an electrical engineer here at Starfish Medical. I've been working at Starfish since I graduated from university in 2015. I've worked on everything from extremely small medical devices all the way up to very large carts. And I've worked on everything from ultrasound to fluorescent assays and everything in between. Many assays require detecting very small amounts of light on the order of a few hundred or a few thousand photons per second. Previously, you could only do this with big, large benchtop instrumentation that used vacuum tubes. With the advent of a recent technology called a silicon photomultiplier, we can actually now take what used to be only possible on the benchtop and shrink it down to a very small, low-power, low-cost medical device. We've done this for a client. They took a very large fluorescent assay that required big benchtop equipment and we shrunk it down into a form factor that was only five milliliters. My name is Kimberly Noon. I'm an industrial designer uh, that specializes in UX design at Starfish Medical. Uh, working at Starfish Medical is great because I get to design meaningful devices that um, you can't do anywhere else. It's a mix of industrial design and UX design um, that can really impact the lives of, of people that you care for. To help align your product design strategies, I suggest that you create personas. Personas are a synthesized representation of your target market. They help align your product design strategies to a small handful of individuals instead of an entire population. And so with the direction of uh, biomedical devices to home health care, you can't design for just uh, biomedical engineers or uh, lab technicians. You're designing for Amanda, a mother of two. Um, who is suffering with IBS and she wants to test. So we designed a lateral flow assay that is discreet to buy over the counter, is child safe, as well as easy to search for on Google searches. So my name is Alexandra Reed. I go by Sandy for short. I'm a proposal writer here at Starfish Medical. Uh, my background is from plant molecular biology and I've been working with the government for quite some time uh, looking at grant evaluations. So I bring a wealth of knowledge of understanding both science and engineering uh, language and trying to make it understood in layman's terms. And what I enjoy about being here at Starfish is that every client is different, every project is different, and so there's unique challenges in trying to understand what the client uh, needs assistance with and how we can help move them forward. Developing a biological assay is expensive, and my tip is you can stretch your R&D dollars further by applying for grants. And you might think this is too much paperwork, and what I would suggest is partnering with an academic researcher and design a collaborative project together. Profs are pros applying for grants, and you'll gain access to not only their lab, their specialized equipment, 
but also the brain power of their entire research team. Grants can double the value of your project, and if you combine this with research tax credits, you can gain up to five times in cost savings. The tidbit that I would gather from a collaboration perspective is that we're not experts in everything. Often our clients come to us with a specific core technology and uh, work with engineers to try to determine what the best product is. So when we're trying to analyze what a product wants to be, uh, our clients are often the experts in the specific binding assay that they're trying to perform in the specific um, quantification modality that they're going after. And so we're not experts in what our clients are, but what we are experts in is productizing those things. So if it needs to be a low cost disposable, how do we go about that? Is it an injection molding process? Is it a PMS silicone transfer? Uh, how do you functionalize the surface of this in large volumes? Those are all challenges that uh, a clinician or a uh, expert in the field of what they're looking for wouldn't necessarily have the expertise in. And so uh, what I mean by collaboration in a lot of these instances is uh, the surface chemistry uh, or, the, or the application to uh, their assay is what our clients are experts in. We take those inputs and then we develop products for them. And so that can involve thinking about how the disposables will interface with the non-disposables. It, it can be on the regulatory process to get something sterilized and through um, the regulatory bodies, it can involve a whole slew of things that sort of plug in from the productization perspective.